Welcome back to the channel guys. We're gonna show you today how to convert this four foot chain link fence into a six foot chain link fence without removing the posts. That's the big thing right here. We're gonna install some post extensions. We're gonna give you guys some links for these extensions. We're gonna show you how to do this. Here we go. The two tools that we're gonna use immediately to start this project is we're gonna use some nippets. Make sure and see the link below if you're looking for some. And we're gonna use a DeWalt 20 volt impact with a half inch socket. We're gonna use this to remove the bolts and nuts from the tension bands. We're gonna use the nippets for cutting all the ties. We're also gonna to have to cut off the hog rings off the tension wire. Okay. Now, when you take the nuts and the bolts out from the tension bands, you wanna make sure not to take the nut and the bolt out from the tension wire, if your fence has a tension wire. We're gonna go ahead and loosen the top rail. And don't throw it away though, because your neighbor down the street, he might want that. So the next thing that we gotta do is let's remove the caps. One thing I could have done different in the very beginning is taking the nuts and the bolts, put them in the cap. You do that, they're easier to find. Granted though, if you do that, you're bound to kick it at least like five or 10 times. Now that we are loosening the top rail, we're gonna pull the top rail out of here and just set it behind. Okay, that's where we're gonna go and convert this fence to the way that it feels. So we got these handy post extensions. You could do three ways of installing these. One, you could weld it and you could weld that seam. You can self tap it or you can through bolt it. We're gonna do two options. So we're gonna do self tapping method and the through bolt. There is links down below for the extensions. So the, this is an inch and seven eighths post. The other two are two and three eighths. They're terminals and this one's a line. And this size it's is a lot closer to an inch and five eighths. So the pipe is tighter, therefore the weld, you can't get the weld as up underneath between the two seams of pipe like you could on the two and three eighths. So there's just a little bit of a gap there. If we wanted to get that gap closer, what we'd do is just take your grinder and just try and bevel it out just a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go ahead and put a couple self tappers in this one, probably here and here or here, or here, or here. Just remember that you have about 10 inches to play with. So we're probably gonna use about four self tappers. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull a drill bit out of our awesome drill bit index. This thing has 29 drill bits in it. It has a weatherproof gasket on here, so you're guaranteed to keep moisture out to keep your drill bits from rusting. So you could like throw that thing over there and I bet you all the drill bits are in the same spot. All the drill bits are all still right there. Get yourself one of these. Make sure and see the link below. Almost dropped it. That would have been bad. Now you wanna make sure not to throw it when the lid is off or else your drill bits really will go everywhere. So we're gonna do another one down. Let's do two this way. Now we'll take that screw and put it in there. So as you can see, it was trying to pull over just a little bit. It wants to pull the inner post all the way over to the inside edge of the bottom post. So to clean that up just a little bit, that's where I'm going to use that second screw on the other side. Perfect. Now I can't rotate it or anything, so there's one option. Let's take that one out. We're gonna go through this post and through that next one. As 
far as the last method, this one takes just a little bit more effort. There's one hole there. So we still have a little bit of movement there, just a little bit easier on the self tapper. That one doesn't move as much, but it's still not coming out, which is the big thing. We did the self tap, we did the through bolt. This one right here, this is the line post. We're not gonna do anything with it. So we're gonna measure down four inches and another four inches there because your top rail is supposed to sit on top of the line post, which is right here. Now everything should fit as normal. So the way that I have that rail in right now, coming off the bottom of the rail, it lands right into that line. Now that's really starting to look like a six foot fence. So the top rail's in place, our tension wire's there. The tension wire we never had to take off. All right, so we have some six foot, two by 11 by 72, KK. So now because we're converting from a four foot to a six foot, we need a new tension bar. This is a six foot tension bar. This is gonna slide down into the chain link. You're also gonna need now a total of five tension bands. There was four on the four foot tall post. We need one more for each side, which gives us five per post. We're gonna cut it down below the knuckle and fold it back to itself. Why? Just so it looks pretty. So we're gonna go in. We're gonna snug that down and it's gonna hold it there for us while we continue to work on the rest of the fence. Four and a half. This is the one we want to take out. We're going to follow it down. We're going to cut there. Again, for any of these parts and pieces that we're using, make sure and check out our website if you're looking for any tension bands, brace bands, tension wire, truss rods. For any of that stuff, make sure, make sure and check out our website. We'll ship it right to you. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay, so we're gonna use our rake right here, the top rail dressing tool. We're gonna hook it back to itself. It's gonna hold the fabric in for us. It's just easy to use, especially on your terminations, a lot easier instead of trying to chase your fabric up and down like I was trying to do. And then once we go to tying the post, it makes it a lot easier there as well. Can you go back to the shop again? And get what? Inch and seven eighths ties. Five. Now to stretch this, you're gonna use what they call a bear hold. These things are awesome. This is a two and three eighths bear hold. They come all the way from inch and three eighths all the way to four inch. They make your life easy, especially for short runs of chain link. What I'm gonna do here is put it in. I'm pulling the handle. It's gonna bring it around. It's gonna lock into place so that that way I can install my nut, my bolt, and my tension band. So now we can take our second bear hold, go about midpoint, and put that one on. I can still, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty dang good. Let it go. We'll move it right here, and we'll hook it back to itself. So that way it's at the right height. And I can now go ahead and tie this by myself. We're gonna use what they call an easy tie and they're awesome. They come in 11 gauge, nine gauge. What we're looking for, 
I'm trying to get it nice and straight and everything consistent with the top row. At all the intersecting points of the diamonds, you can see lines and you want to try and make it as straight as you possibly can and not make it look like a dinosaur's back. We are going to go ahead and install our hog rings. We're going to hog ring back that tension wire with our hog ring pliers. Make sure and see the link below for 11 gauge hog rings and for hog ring pliers. We're going to take the hog ring itself and go to the exact same spot that we went up here, just only in the bottom. <clears throat> One more there. Put the caps back on. Now she looks just the way that she feels. She felt like a six foot fence and now she has a six foot fence. Make sure and see the links below if you're looking for extensions. Now, if you need a refresher on building residential grade chain link fence, make sure and see that video right here. Now, if you want to see how to install a single swing and a double drive into a residential chain link fence, make sure and catch those two videos right here. This is Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and we hope you have a good dang day.